Recently, Russian invaders have increasingly besieged populated areas of Ukraine with indirect fire. The fact is that the occupiers do not manage to capture villages and cities in the traditional way. The focus of the Russian army's new tactics is concentrated around specific settlements in the Donetsk region, emphasizing the ruthless nature of their approach. The complexity and devastation of the Russian army's new tactics highlight the brutal realities faced by the populations in the conflict-affected regions of Ukraine. Despite the ongoing challenges, the defense forces in Ukraine are steadfast in defending captured territories and countering the aggressive advances of the Russian army. Recently, Yannick Kesselman, deputy head of Estonian intelligence, said that October will be one of the bloodiest months of the war for the Russians. The scout drew attention to the fact that the Russian army does not stop its advance along the entire front line, but local successes of the enemy are possible only against the background of constant massive shelling and so-called meat assaults. Yannick Kesselman voiced the assumption that in October, the losses of the Russian invaders could again be insane. And this month, it seems, as one of the largest in terms of losses for Russia. According to our estimates, the enemy will lose about 40,000 servicemen, both wounded and killed, within a month, he stressed. As the Estonian intelligence officer noted, the main focus of the Russian army is concentrated around the settlements of Zeleny and Korokov in the Pokrovsky direction in Donetsk region. According to Kesselman's data, more and more often the Russian occupiers began to resort to tactics in which they do not directly enter populated areas. The main reason is that it requires more complex training and self-organization from them. Therefore, they besiege settlements with indirect fire. After the settlement is surrounded, they simply destroy it, a very cynical and disgusting thing explained the scout. According to him, the Russian army has moved forward in the area of Chasiv Yar and is trying to storm even more actively the positions of the armed forces of Ukraine in the Lyman direction. North Korean soldiers are already in Russia and will begin military operations against Ukrainian troops in the coming days. This indicates that the North Korea is fully participating in the war with Ukraine, said the head of the Presidential Office of Ukraine, Andriy Yermak, in an interview with the Italian publication Corriere della Sera. He noted that he could not yet say how many people were involved and whether North Korean units could really change the course of the war. More detailed information was needed. However, according to Yermak, the North Korean military is completely changing the political scenario and meaning of the war caused by Russian aggression. De facto, we can say that North Korea is participating in this conflict. De jour, there was no official declaration of war from Pyongyang, but de facto, they joined the military aggression against our country, a conflict that has been going on for a decade. Yermak noted, he also stressed that it is not enough to simply stop the fighting. It is necessary to prevent further aggression, otherwise the Baltic and Balkan countries will be at risk. If Ukraine doesn't stop the invasion, they will be next. Answering a question about the possibility of asking NATO to send troops, Yermak emphasized that the Ukrainians are fighting themselves, of course, with the help of our partners, but on their own, and are doing so quite effectively. At the same time, he noted Ukraine needs a sufficient amount of weapons and financial support because only a strong and militarily secure Ukraine will be ready for serious negotiations with Russia. Thousands of North Korean troops are preparing to back Russian ruler Vladimir Putin in his war against Ukraine. The new soldiers are reportedly from North Korea's Special Operations Forces, the country's most capable military unit, and are likely to be deployed to Russia's Kursk region to try to retake the territory. However, Western analysts can only speculate on how effective these forces are against the backdrop of Ukraine's capable army, writes Phillips Payson O'Brien, professor of strategic studies at the University of St. Andrews in Scotland, in an article for The Atlantic. Putin saw an opportunity to strengthen his hand in the war and took it, regardless of the Western backlash. He appears to be betting that the United States will not intervene directly. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin acknowledged that North Korea had joined Russia in the conflict, calling it a very serious problem. Since the start of the full-scale invasion, 
The United States has been hesitant to provide Ukraine with advanced weapons such as HIMARS, Abrams tanks, ATACMS missiles, F-16 fighters and JASM long-range missiles. While these weapons were eventually provided, it was a waste of time that limited Ukraine's options. Moreover, the United States has never given a clear answer to the question of whether it would allow Western weapons to be used to strike Crimea, the Kirsch Bridge and other Russian targets outside of Ukraine. С той стороны где-то. Вот, да, 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 правильно, по всему. Не видно его. Вот он, вот он, вот он, вижу, вижу. Еще вот летит сейчас. Летит, летит. Сейчас летит. С той стороны где-то. Вот, да, 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 правильно, по всему. Не видно его. Вот он, вот он, вот он, вижу, вижу.